Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So I have been getting a lot of uh, basically messages for portfolio advice. And there's one theme that keeps coming up over and over that I would like to discuss. And it's this idea, almost this stigma of fan art. So I think I know where this stigma comes from. I'd like to touch on that a little bit uh, because I think I'm much like you and I've heard that passed down a lot. Uh, but yeah, um, I wanted to talk about this and let you know that it's all going to be okay. <laughs> but we're going to do a piece of fan art of our own, of uh, our boy, Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Kind of a stylized deal so uh, i think this one took me about 51 52 minutes in real time um but yeah i want to discuss this and let's really dig in and talk about it because i think i have quite a bit to say and i think i have some things that might surprise you on this but anyways let's get started on the time lapse let's talk about this and yeah let's go All right, so here we go. I'm going to bring the mic down a little bit. So fan art, this whole fan art thing. Uh, first, before we get into that topic, I just wanted to touch base on this uh, piece right here. I, I've been going through, you know, over the past two months, and I think we're all aware, kind of a, a existential crisis of style. Like what, what, what style do I have? What am I good at? What am I not good at? What do I need to practice? All that stuff. So I wanted to make a dynamic, colorful uh, piece of fan art of Solid Snake. So uh, I, I just want, I, I feel like sometimes my work is a little too academic and a little too, ooh, look at the brush stroke, look at the, uh, you know, texture, look at all this other stuff. But with this one, I just wanted to have fun. I was heavily inspired by Ashley Wood's art. He did uh, the art for the Metal Gear Solid graphic novel, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, but his was very uh, monotone, monochrome type stuff to where he had a lot of either just a blue slate or a red slate or a uh, gray slate and just kind of worked within those realms, not a lot of color. So I thought, what if I took that crazy brushstroke stuff and, and kind of line drawing, but then made it kind of bright and colorful. So that's what we're going to take a look at here. Let me know what you think about it. I, uh, My heart is in the old gothic-y, low contrast stuff, uh, or maybe like Rembrandt style, you know, rendering. But with this, this is just a lot of fun. And I think it, it's fitting to talk about fan art when you talk about having fun. So first off, what, what are we going, going to define as fan art? And that is just, if you are a fan of something, whether it's like a TV show like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or video games, uh, you know, Metal Gear Solid or Final Fantasy or uh, any of that, you know, stuff or TV shows, Game of Thrones, anything. It doesn't have to be animated or, you know, fictional. It could, you know, you could do a fan art of your favorite author. Um, I know a lot of people that have gotten commission work doing portraits for magazines of like Stephen King and... So, I mean, that, that can also, I guess, be considered fan art. Um, but really, the way I define fan art is based on, is art based on an already established intellectual property. So something that, you know, Spider-Man, X-Men, World of Warcraft, uh, Call of Duty, you know, these big brands that already exist, uh, doing art representational of either their style, like doing, uh, let's say you're wanting to do fan art of a Hearthstone card, the card game. Uh, by Blizzard and you do you know a character or you do a remake of uh, a, an actual card a card that you just love and you want to practice the style and stuff like that like um, a lot of professional artists and even a lot of art instructors will tell you not to put fan art in your portfolio don't put fan art in there. Don't do it because that stuff doesn't belong to you and it shows you don't have original ideas or something. You know what I mean? Like there's that stigma. And I actually heard this in art school of whenever you're showcasing your work, make sure it is your work. Make sure you're not kind of aping the design sensibilities of Solid Snake or what have you. Um, because you, you want to show the client that you can make original ideas. So a few things on that. Number one, there is no such thing as original ideas. Get that out of your head right now. 
doesn't exist. Anything you think you're a hotshot and created has already been created. I promise. I promise. <laughs> it's a guarantee, you know. So get that whole originality thing out of your head. We had a video probably a few months ago uh, about artistic fears, if you want to go check that one out, because it talks about this originality and, oh, what if I'm not good enough? It kind of ties into imposter syndrome because people think, hey, if I make up my own idea, maybe I'll be more valid. And I think that stigma carries over into the whole fan art conversation because it's like, well, I want to show people that, you know, yeah, I, I can have interests or whatever, but, you know, I can make my own thing and my stuff is just as cool as that other stuff. And one of my favorite quotes about this uh, comes from Warren Spector. Now, if you don't know who Warren Spector is, he is a video game designer. One of the best video game designers in the world, in my opinion. He made, um, he, he was part of a company called Looking Glass Studios and Ion Storm and some things like that in the, uh, I mean, he'd been making games f since the 80s, uh, probably even earlier than that, but wh where he really got famous was Deus Ex. Uh, computer game and my favorite game of all time and he also worked on uh, games in the Thief series, uh, System Shock, some big pivotal things for me and he also got hired on at Disney and he was behind a game called Epic Mickey and someone in an interview, I want to say this was maybe an old Games for Windows podcast uh, from the you know early 2000s uh, asked him about, you know, do you feel like you're kind of tied down because you're working with Mickey Mouse, that you can't really do a lot? Uh, maybe that Disney kind of has their finger on the pulse and whatever, like they're really watching you like a hawk. And Warren actually, you know, he sat back and he said, actually, no. Like, in fact, it's the other way around. There's more that we can do because we don't have to worry about creating the camera from scratch. You know, you, you don't have to worry about inventing something from scratch, which already takes a lot of brain power. Now you can just have fun with this. But he was like, if you can't make something cool with Mickey Mouse, what are you doing? And I all that always stuck with me is because, yeah, like, it's Mickey. Like, come on, you could do some cool stuff with Mickey Mouse. Why, what, what is this deal with, like, you, you would be, you know, reprimanded or, I don't, I don't get it. It's like, I can't make something as good as Mickey Mouse. I know for a fact I can't. Will my design live for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years? No. <laughs> it just won't. It's not a lack of confidence. It's like, I am not Walt Disney. Are you kidding me? Like, what are you talking about? So, this kind of a, a roundabout way of getting to my actual point. Make fan art. Make it. Show it on your portfolio. Have it be your splash screen on your freaking website. You want to know why? Because it shows who you are as a person. What are you interested in? What do you like? What is the stuff that actually compels you or drives you to make art in the first place? For me, it's stuff like Metal Gear Solid. It's stuff like System Shock. It's Thief. It's, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, The Legend of Dritzt, like Baldur's Gate. Like, all this stuff, I get super amped, and I want to paint. I'm like, Warhammer, are you kidding me? So, like, make that stuff. Just make it. Show Batman. Show the Joker. Put your own spin on it, maybe. Um, or if it's a technique thing, uh, you know, be sure you label it that it's a study. But I can't tell you how many Paul Dayton studies I've done. He's my favorite Warhammer artist ever. So, of course, I'm going to practice to try to make my stuff look like as good as Paul Dayton's stuff. Like, the, the stigma behind fan art, I will never understand. In fact, I guarantee that I was hired at Cubicle 7 um, for the Warhammer 40k job because I had three pieces of Warhammer 40k art in my portfolio. I guarantee it. And the reason why is because as an art director, if I see somebody that's already passionate about the intellectual property, they have the skills to do the job, and they're interested enough to do it on their own time, I'm probably going to reach out to them. Just saying. If they're already in that, and I don't have to go through the whole, like, well, Warhammer 40k was made by Games Workshop, and Rogue Trader was the... Like, you don't have to... <laughs> you don't have to go through it. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? Like... 
You don't have to go through the history of time in order to catch somebody up to get them on a project. They already know it. They already love it. So they will maybe even put some stuff in there that you didn't even think of as an art director because it's like, oh, of course, they read these this trilogy of books and, you know, they could come from a great place. Now, it is kind of dangerous because you don't want... I don't know. You don't want the 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 artist to go kind of renegade on you and turn into a real stickler of like comic book guy from The Simpsons to where if the art director gives you uh you know feedback and say well technically in book seven of like don't be that guy but 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 just know that your love of a topic or of a subject is going to come through. And here's the thing, you're going to have more fun making the art. That's just how it is. If it's a thing that you want to do, you are going to have a better time doing it. Now, I'm a weirdo, so not only do I love, you know, things like Metal Gear and, uh, you know, Boulder's Gate and all this stuff, I also do fan art of, like, John Singer Sargent. That's where I come from. I have such a love and, like, deep respect for the Anders Zorns and the Degas and stuff like that. I consider that fan art as well. Like, I'm such a fan of them, I want to learn that style and kind of carry it forward. So, that's where I get my kind of quote-unquote classical traditional chops from, is I do fan art of the, the masters. And I, I think, I, I mean, I hope it shows. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's funny because I wonder if people... Um, out there can tell like if they look through my portfolio or any artist portfolio can you look at a piece and be like ah they kind of phoned this one in <laughs> you know like mm, i see they weren't ready they, they got 80 percent through and then they were just done with it so then they just posted it i have quite a few of those actually <laughs> and they're actually still up i need to go and do my weekly purge of my portfolio um <laughs> But do fan art, guys. Please do it. Like, enjoy yourself. God forbid you enjoy what you're doing, right? Just go for it. Have fun. Um, I can tell you tons of artists that got professional gigs and are now like lifetime illustrators for projects because they started with fan art. There's so, There are so many comic book illustrators that got started by doing Todd McFarlane or Jim Lee fan art. It's nuts. It's nuts. And it's funny if you go onto YouTube and listen to some like creator, whatever industry you're interested in, whether it's like imaginative realism, such as Magic the Gathering or D&D, or like yeah, comic books for Marvel or DC or Im uh, uh, Image or uh, Vertigo or anything like that. Uh, listen to some of these creator interviews because you're going to get a lot of insight about... Hell, I think Dave Raposa, one of my favorite uh, artists, he has such a unique take um, on illustration and his advice is gold. It's funny and it's kind of demented, but it's t he's totally correct a lot of times. And he got a huge break by doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan art, which still gets passed around. And that he, he will be the first one to tell you that like lit that fire under his career because people saw it. It's a thing they already know. And that's the other thing. Your viewer already has an established relationship with the character or with the with the content. So why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Why wouldn't you uh, kind of get that leverage? And it's nice because in a lot of ways, that's how art works anyway, is, you know, you work with colors like red as a stoplight and blue as the sky. And even if that's not actually correct, you know, like with the rods and cones of your eyes and the prisms and all that, you know, but you know, if you're going to make a tree, it's probably a good idea to start with the bark being brown and the leaves being green, unless it's a different type of thing. You can use people's preconceived notions to your advantage. You don't have to reinvent everything all the time. That's too much work. And trust me, I because I'm I'm still there sometimes. If I sit down to paint and I'm like, oh my gosh, not only do I have to make a great piece that lives up to my other stuff or is my, my quote unquote masterpiece, 
now I have to invent a thing. So not only am I I'm an artist, but I'm an inventor. Like I have to create the most cool thing ever and make it look the best and paint it well and remember all my social media stuff like get out of here. That's too much. You wouldn't you won't do anything. You're going to be so it's that whole paralysis by analysis. You're going to have so much stuff going through your mind that you won't get started on any of it. So just make cool stuff. Make cool stuff. Be proud of it. Show it off. And trust me, it's almost like a cheat sheet for social media. If you want to get a whole lot of followers on social, man, do a kick-ass Batman fan art. I promise you, you're going to get people out the wazoo. Uh, but then they're only going to expect Batman fan art, and then you run into another problem. <laughs> but that's for a different video. Let me know what you think about this topic, guys. Did you ever get that advice? Were you like me and got that advice to never, ever put fan art in your professional portfolio? If so, what did you think about it? Did it feel right? Did it feel wrong? Do you still live by it? I know some artists that still do. They they might do some fun fan art sketches stuff on the side, but they will never quote unquote publish it and put it on their portfolio. Um, but I'm on the thing of, hey, if it's cool and it makes you happy, like put it out there because odds are it's going to make somebody else happy. But yeah, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you think, what your experience with fan art is. Uh, but until next time, uh, keep making cool stuff. Appreciate the support. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe and all that stuff um, if you're sexy and you know that you are. So uh, we will talk to you guys next time. Bye.